is it time to give Lamar Jackson his third MVP? Because he looked awesome last night for the Ravens. They beat the Bucks 41 to 31. Lamar was spectacular. Five touchdowns. He only had five incompletions. So he had as many touchdowns last night as he had incompletions in the game. 333 total yards. He was 17 to 22 in the air. He has gotten so much better against the Blitz, which was on full display last night. Um, He's been really creative with his throws. He's been confident. He's been cool. He's been collected. He's been a wonderful leader of this Ravens offense. And yes, his life is made significantly easier by Derrick Henry and everything that Derrick Henry is able to do, even though Henry didn't have his best game of the season last night. But he also has such an assortment of rep weapons. You and I talked about it yesterday of who's the best team in the AFC, who's the best team in the NFC. And we put the Ravens and the Chiefs in a category of their own in the AFC. And I will stand by that because what the Ravens have offensively, the Chiefs have defensively. If you put them together, they'd be a perfect team. But the Ravens looked really, really solid last night. It's a, it's a league full of really big, strong, fast, and athletic dudes. If you have one of those dudes who jumps off the screen, that is special. That is spectacular. And what Zay Flowers does for them as a wide receiver, and throw, uh, what's his name? Is it Bates? Bateman. Bateman. Rashad Bateman. Bateman. Throw yeah. Bateman in there as well. What those two little fast-ass receivers do for them <laughs> is, is incredible to sit back and watch. So, yes, Lamar Jackson has been better handling the blitz. Last night, in particular, the blitz was getting to him. He's so elusive. He's not going, he's not Josh Allen or Ben Roethlisberger or Cam Newton, where just the sheer size of him allows him to shrug off defensive linemen left and right. No, he's just elusive. He's hard to bring down. So he moves around in the pocket. He moves around outside of the pocket, and he's figuring out, and he's learned, I don't need to take off and run immediately. Let me square up and see who's running. Up oh, there Bateman is wide the hell open here you go there mark andrews is there's isaiah land there's trey likely. flowers uh likely excuse me they're like i'm mixing up my players you're fine there's there's uh what you call it flowers who's just fast i yeah. i don't know who the fastest dude in the nfl is i hadn't sat down and looked at the next gen nfl tracker stats or what have you but line them up at a, and have them run 100 and i would put my money on zay flowers like he's that fast and that fun of a, a receiver to sit down and and watch and Lamar Jackson is having one of those really really special years and we have a running game with Derrick Henry that complements what Lamar mm -hmm. Jackson can do running the ball as well Henry is more of a power back Lamar Jackson more of a finesse when you have that going on with those weapons at wide receiver it lends itself to your offense being really 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 good the fastest I always think Tyreek Hill when you think yeah, fastest receiver. Yeah, well, throw Tyreek Hill in there. Xavier Worthy broke the 40-yard oh, dash record. I forgot Worthy so was running still around still have here. him. But I, I'm not talking 40. I'm talking 100. I got you. I will say we – I included the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in my best of the NFC yesterday, and uh, last night's game made me take a bit of a pause on the Bucs. One, because they probably lost Chris Godwin for the year. That ankle turn was just – awful like he's not officially out for the year but the look on his face and him immediately saying back to work broke my heart and would lead me to believe that he's probably done for the season and that game turned that's where last night in terms of a performance for Lamar Jackson like they came back they were down early it felt like the Bucks could run away with that and then uh, Mike Evans re-aggravated his hamstring injury this is why it was such a perfect like for Grizzlies fans right now watching what's happening with Jaron Jackson Jr. And I know the frustration of him not being available for opening night because you just want to see it. And you, you want the injuries of last season to be in the past and it's easy to catastrophize because you witnessed it last year. Um, but in dealing with a hamstring strain that he suffered on the first day of training camp, you want to be sure he's 100% good to go. And that goes with the conditioning involved in getting ready for the season and just making sure you're not going to be in a position like Mike Evans last night, who after having his 100th career receiving touchdown and becoming the 11th player in NFL history to have 100 receiving touchdowns, then you see him on the ground in the end zone grabbing his hamstring. And it's like, oh, man. Like, and that stinks for the Bucs to lose both of them. And we don't know what Mike Evans' return will be now, but you just hope that he didn't make it worse. And this is, this is what the NFL becomes this time of the year. I, I Catchphrases, cliches, whatever. They exist for a reason, though. Sports cliches exist for a reason. They're trite. I don't like them, but here I go. It's a war of attrition. 
when dudes start going down injured, can you adapt and change on the fly? And if you can't, do you have quality players behind them to pick up the, the slack? We saw it this weekend with the Chiefs, I feel. Not the Chiefs, the 49ers. Uh, well, hell, and the Chiefs. They're down a lot of players as well. We saw it with the Chiefs and the 49ers in that game. As the 49ers, without Debo, without uh, Jennings in play, I went down injured. No McCaffrey. Debo's in the hospital. Right? So without, well, pneumonia. without those players, is hey, what are you? And now with the Bucks, it is, hey, without these two studs at wide receiver, are we confident, trusting Baker to push the ball down the field still? Or... Are we going to lean more on a Bucky in that in that run game? I'm curious to see which way the Bucks go. And one of the reasons I like the the Ravens is because usually you're not going to suffer six or seven catastrophic injuries all within a week time span right. on one side of the ball. Usually, so as long as you have some common Lamar Jackson first, and then at least one of those other dudes that I named, at least one of Derrick Henry, Zay Flowers. Or or Rashad Bateman, and they got injured. Last you're night. you're you're fine. You're right. good to you're good to go. And also, you throw in Mark Andrews was out to start the year. Mark Andrews is now back, so you throw him into that mix as well. He had at least one touchdown. He might have had two touchdowns last night, if I remember correctly. He had one. Um, you're you're fine. So they are built to be able to suffer injuries from a skill position player standpoint and still keep on humming uh, along. Everybody's not built that way. So if you're the Tampa Bay Buccaneers right now offensively and you're looking around, hey, we're down our two best offensive weapons, what do we do? I I would think you'd say, all right, time possession time. Let's let's just tote the tater and play really, really good defense. I think that defense is still pretty good. Uh, They just ran into a buzzsaw. We've seen the Ravens make good defenses look inept this season. Um, Let's just do that and then see what it gets us until one or both of those players come back if – one or both of those players can come back. Yeah. The Jessica Benson Show with C.J. Hurt, live every weekday at 8 a.m.